Hi guys, Mark Dawes, NFPS Limited. This is just a quick short video to inform you that very shortly we're going to be offering you the opportunity to undertake online risk assessment training. Now many of you will understand the importance of risk assessment training, but for those of you who may be a bit unsure, let me just clarify for you that risk assessments are an integral part of safeguarding what you do. They are a legal requirement under various bits of legislation, particularly the Health and Safety at Work Act, and it's your duty to provide a safe environment for people that you train with, people that you work with, and even people that visit your offices, even if your offices are at home. Now you may have seen recently the press article we blogged out there where the police officer is suing because she tripped over a curbstone and injured herself. Well, the solicitors acting on her behalf are suing partly because under the Occupiers Liability Act 1957, the garage owner, they are alleging, fail to provide a safe place of work and safe access to the officer. Now they're also suing because they failed to provide a risk assessment for the curbstone which they're claiming was the hazard that the police officer injured herself on. Well you don't have to go very far to look at other examples of where people are suing. For example if you, if you google on the press and I'm just going on my iPad here and I've just opened this up and there is a teacher who's actually been awarded £400,000 in compensation. Uh, it, was, it was actually uh, reported on this month because uh, a pupil knocked the, person, the teacher's arm into a filing cabinet. Now, if you look at teachers' compensations this year, based on last year's figures, the teachers' unions are saying that teachers' compensation has reached £30 million. Now, a lot of that is because there is no risk assessment. Teachers get injured at work, and because the employer, their school, their headmaster, whoever, has failed to provide a safe working environment for them, their actions have won. Now, a lot of these are actually paid out on no win, no fee, what they call conditional agreements. But just stop and think for a minute of the implication that can have on you. For example, many of you watching this will run martial arts clubs. You may be teaching physical defence, some form of officer safety, possibly restraint training, breakaway, self-defence, whatever. Well, here's one for you. There's a, a golfer who's actually suing at the moment, and I'm reading it here as we speak. It, it was um, a 2011 case. They're suing a West Lothian club over an eye explosion. And what they're saying is that the golfer took a hazardous shot, the ball injured the golfer's eye, and the golfer is suing the person who took the shot and the golf club for failing to provide them with a safe environment to actually practice their sport in. Now there's been lots of other cases in the press. You've only got to Google them yourselves. Do your own research, please do so. There's been compensation paid out for someone who was spat at, the spit went into their eye, and because there was no safe system of work, the person actually lost 80% of the sight in their eye. And you can read this on our, on our blog post. And in fact, what I'll do is below this video, I'll actually put a few links to these cases so you can have a look at them yourselves. But this brings me back to the question, why do the course? Well, if someone makes an allegation against you, if someone claims that you hurt them, injured them, as a result of you not having safe systems of work, then they can take that action against you. A risk assessment is a good way of not only identifying what hazards you have and then putting them right, but also it's good documented evidence to take into court. Now, it may not mean you will win the claim, but it could certainly reduce the amount of the payout that the injured party gets. Now morally, ethically, legally, risk assessments are a great tool. And if you are doing anything that could be deemed hazardous, and a hazard is defined as anything with a potential to cause injury or harm, then you should be assessing that hazard to lower the risk, the foreseeable risk and, and the risk of harm that could be caused. Now this online course is going to teach you exactly how to do that. It's going to take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to undertake risk assessments. We're going to provide you with all the online resources you need, similar to the online reasonable force course. There'll be workbooks, there'll be exercises, loads and loads of legal advice for you, but a simple step-by-step -step process of how to do this. And, like I said to you before, we're going to go where most other people won't go. We're going to teach you how to risk assess physical skills training. So. Restraint training, self-defense, use of force, martial arts, really, really important stuff for you guys. We're going to show you a structured formula for how to do that. And remember, we have been doing this successfully for over 20 years. And I've helped our clients in the past implement risk assessment processes for their restraint training, for their personal safety training, for all sorts of violence at work activities. 
This course will be available very, very soon. If you're interested, put your details in the box below, and as soon as it's good to go, we'll let you know. Thanks for listening. All the best.